Hey guys, welcome back to Floki's Models. Let's jump right into this 251-22 build by first starting with removing all the track links from the tree and sorting them into containers to keep from losing them later. Every track link has three spur attachment points on them to clean up. A brand new number 11 blade makes fast work of this. I like using this small blade handle that's just a bit over an inch and a half long. I find I have more control over the blade with it. After an hour or so of work, I had the track links cleaned up, and decided to focus on cleaning the two sprue grates up on each one of the track pads. After about another hour, I had the track pads all cleaned up, and was ready to start assembling them. These Dragon 251 tracks can be made workable, with a bit of patience and careful application of the glue. Just slot one track into the other and add a drop of glue into the hole. Then just carefully add the pad and it locks the two tracks together, keeping them movable. This is when I lost all the video of how I assembled the track runs. First making groups of two, then the two to four, four to eight, etc. till I had enough for run complete track run. The two five ones I've built in the past, I needed 54 for one side and 56 for the other. Almost like on the real two five one. And once everything is assembled, we are left with two working track links. I started with the tracks first so I can use them to make sure I have no floating road reels later on in the build. Now to start on the lower hull, first by adding this armor plate to the forward section. I'm not 100% sure, but I believe this was added on to protect the transmission. Then to the assembling of the truck wheels. These are very nice two-piece wheels that join together with no visible seam. Just adding some extra glue around the rim on the back side of the tire to keep it together. Now on to the front suspension. You can make the wheels workable with some careful glue application. Just trap parts C30 and C35 between parts C20 and C25. Part C15 can just snap in place onto parts C30 and C35. Now we have steerable front reels. This assembly now is just ready for some more cleanup. The front suspension can also be made workable side to side by trapping it between parts C10 and C11 here. Now it can rock back and forth. Moving back to the lower hull, we need to fit part B9 to the front, and make sure it's sitting in the correct position. To do that, just dry fit your pieces for the hull sides before the glue fully sets up on part B9. Once it's in the correct position, I add more glue to lock it in place, and double check to make sure it hasn't moved. Now to add the last piece of the suspension assembly, part C8. And now that B9 is securely in place, I can add the suspension assembly to it. Be sure to have the point in the center of this hole so the suspension can move equal distance both ways.
Now the workable and steerable suspension is working correctly and in place. Just going to dry fit the front truck wheels here. They are a nice tight fit. And just showing how much range of motion you can get if you put this in a diorama with a lot of uneven ground. This is the swing arms for the road wheels. Even though you got two locator pins, there was a lot of play up and down. The way I tackle this is use a lot of glue in each hole to keep them pliable long enough to get them all on. I eyeball them the best that I can and use my paintbrush to check as well. I hurry and dry fit all the road wheels, then set everything on the track runs to make sure nothing is floating. I let that sit overnight on the track runs, and then I add the connection for the last road wheel, and also the one for the drive sprocket. I know it doesn't look or seem like it should be correct, but this gap is supposed to be here. I found that out the hard way on one of my first 251s that I built about eight years ago. Now let's start on the lower hall floor. The Slash 22 didn't have any radio equipment or even the seat for the radio operator. So using an old pair of side cuts, I cut away at the seat attachment point. I then come in with a number 11 blade and clean up all the edges. Using some styrene sheet, I place the floor on top of it and then trace out the hole. I cut that shape out a bit on the large side and then sand it down to get a snug fit. Once I'm happy with the fit, I end up gluing it in place. I added another piece of styrene to block the hole in from the back, then filled the hole with another piece of styrene and glue. Using a mix of Tamiya Putty Basic Type and Tamiya Extra Thin, I've mixed this up to be a little bit on the thick side compared to if I was applying armor texture. I fill and stipple this plate, trying to give it the same texture as the rest of the floor. This will be almost completely hidden on the final assembly, so it doesn't have to be perfect. As that dries, I moved my attention to the sidewalls by removing all the locator marks for the many other versions of the 251 using a number 11 blade. And believe me, there's a lot of these marks to remove. To fill in some ejector marks on the sidewalls, I used Deluxe Perfect Plastic Putty. I also use Perfect Plastic Putty to fill in a couple marks on the floor. The 
the Slash 22 only has one bench in it, so I have to open up the holes for it using my pin vise. Then clean up the holes again using a number 11 blade. The box under the bench fits perfectly and gets glued into place. Moving on to the firewall and dashboard by adding all the bits to it. I will paint and add the gas mask canister separately towards the end. The armored viewports are made of clear pieces. I glue both of them in the closed position. The Slash 22 just has a plate welded over the port which would be the radio operator side, so I scraped and sanded this flush. In hindsight I should have just cut a piece of sheet styrene to plug this, but eh, I wasn't thinking at the time. Comparing the two sides here, I end up opening up the vision slot completely on the driver's side, but I don't have video of it. Now to glue the floor and sidewalls into place. This has to be all done at the same time because of the mount and play side to side the floor has, as can be seen here. It's easier than it sounds and looks. Just line one wall up, and then the other. Add glue just to the front section of one wall now. We will glue it all securely once we know it's all lined up. Then just do the same to the other side wall. Then just do a dry fit of the upper hull to make sure it's going to fit well. Then we'll end here with just some shots of the sub-assemblies. Thank you all for watching. I really appreciate all you guys who have subscribed and keep coming back to watch these videos. Again, just thank you all. Subscribe if you haven't yet to see the rest of this getting built and also to see future builds. Uh, leave me a comment and let me know what you think and stay tuned for many more builds to come.